Okay, here we're going to solve the logarithmic equation. Um, to do this, we are going to do, use some properties. And so let me write down the properties of logs, which um, I did in another video already, but let me just write them down again. For one thing, if I have, say, log a, I'll use x and y. If I have log x times y, that's the same thing as log x plus log y. So a product that is in the input of logarithm becomes, if I break this up into two different logarithms, becomes the sum of the logarithms. And if you have log x divided by y, that, that fraction becomes log x minus log y. And when, uh, by the way, this can be for any base. So I'm sort of would like to put natural log, but I don't have that here. I'm going to just use log, which I think often is meant to be a common log, log base 10. If you have um, log x to the r, that's r times log x. Third one we're not really going to use for here, but okay, let's keep going. So, um, so I have these properties. What I'm going to first do is combine by using the property number one. So I'm going to write this as log of x plus 2, x minus 1 equals 1. Now, what, what I have is I have logarithm equaling a number. And so um, let me just put the note. If I have log base uh, 10 to the x equals, say, b, then 10 to the b equals x. Now, this guy here, when I, when I write just log, that means common log. And that means it's implying that that's base 10. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write as a logarithm. Sorry, it's already written as a logarithm. I'm going to write that as an as a, um, exponential equation. So I take that 10 and I do this little loop here, which sort of doesn't mean anything, but except the Maybe it helps, I don't know. 10 to the 1 power equals x plus 2 times x minus 1. Okay, so we, so we write, as, we write as, a, as, a, as an exponent. So this one is common log, so that's base 10. The next problem, oh, it's also common log. But you could have a problem where it's log base 2. All right, so then um, what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, I'm going to note this is a quadratic. And when I, oh gosh, do I even know how to spell quadratic? Okay, when I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this out. I have x squared plus x minus 2. I used FOIL. I sort of did it, you know, in my head. And um, the idea is that we are supposed to know how to do that stuff sort of quickly. But maybe not. And maybe I did that wrong. I think I got it right. So I subtract 10 from both sides and change the order. So I have x squared plus x minus 12. And uh, then what I do is I look at 12 and I think, well, hold on. Isn't 12 4 times 3? Also, I don't know, I'm just using my times table. 12 is 4 times 3 and one of them has to be positive and one has to be negative in order to get negative 12. And then the sum should be positive 1. So it's true that 12 is also 6 times 2 and 12 is 12 times 1. So I sort of... Um, but it's not that many choices. It's my times tables. Okay. I always felt like I was pretty good at those, but I but I but we only had to learn up to nine. Didn't really get, you know, some people get up to like 15 times tables. I try to do that a little. All right, that's another topic, right? For sure. Okay, so let's see. Here's the thing is that note if x equals negative four, then log x plus 2 becomes log of negative 4 plus 2, which is log of negative 2. All right, the problem is, among other things, is I'm getting a little messy now.
and this is undefined. All right, it's not just that it's negative four. Negative four is not the deriv it's not in the domain of, of logarithm. It's the fact that when I put in negative four, when I simplify it, I get something not in the domain. So this guy has got to go. Sayonara for x equals negative four. It is not in the domain. So let me like make a little comment. It's not in the domain. And what I mean is, without writing more, it's not in the domain of log x plus 2. It's also not in the domain of log x minus 1. All right, I'll just write it down. Uh, not in the domain of log x plus 2. But the next one, I, I'm just going to do it in my head by log, if I put in 3. All right, so, so I'm going to the top equation here. If I go to 3 here, and put in 3 for x, I get log of 5. If I put in 3 for x for log x minus 1, I get um, 3 minus 1 is 2, I get log 2. Okay? So, um, is that even the right answer? It seems like I maybe made a mistake or something. Is log 5 plus log 2 equal to 1? How is that? That's... Um, I have to redo this whole video. That's oh yeah, no, it, it works. So okay, yeah, we could check. Let me do that separately. But anyway, this guy is in the domain. Yeah, I was sort of checking my head. Maybe I'll just check. X equals three. If I have log of three plus two, plus log of three minus one, this is log. 5 plus log 2. I'll use that property 1, which combines these. This is log of 5 times 2, which is log 10. And when you have the same base, log 10, of the number 10, you get 1. You can think this is 10 to the 1 power, and log and exponential cancel out. But that's the check. 3 is the number. Oops. Three is the number. All right, now, start a new video. I think I want to continue on this. Now, look, what happened is we combined and we got logarithm equaling a number. The next problem I'm doing is different. There's like two different problems, types of problems you logarithm equations. The next one's different. See, we ended up getting this important line. I'll highlight it. Log of a bunch of junk equals a number, one. Here we get something different when we combine. Here when we combine, on this next problem, same thing we're going to solve. For this next problem, when I combine, I'm going to use the property where I can combine. I have log plus log. I combine and bring them all into one um, log of a product. Okay, now we have a log equals a log. See how this is different? The other one had a log equals a number. Now we have a log equals a log, and we use the one-to-one -one property of logarithm that says if the output, you know, two logs are equal, then the input has to be equal. We get another quadratic. This is done very differently. Logarithm equals a number means you write it as an exponent. Here we have log equals a log, so it's different. I'm going to, but this part, when I do the quadratic business, turns out to be the same. So I had to foil it, add them up, do it. Oh, this is a good deal because I do see that there's a little bit of cancellation of x squared. That makes it a little easier. So x equals 7. And that's just sort of up to me about how hardworking I'm going to be or time-consuming to double-check that if I put in 7... Um, that, you, that, that it actually works, that those are equal. But, okay, so I wanted to do those both in the same video. I, that was a lot shorter, but um, the second one, the 22 and the 21. But I want to put them in the same video because here we have a log equals a number. Maybe I should write that. A log equals a number here. 
it's too messy to, to make any sense of that. Hold on. A log equals a number. See, and then we solve. The next one is a log equals a log. In both cases, though, we had to use properties of logarithm to combine the two together. But, but once you combine them and you get a log equals a number first time and the next time a log equals a log, you do different things. If a log equals numbers, you express it as an exponent. If a log equals a log, it's, it's as if sort of you're canceling log out on both sides. You could think that you're applying exponential to both sides and logs disappear. But we can say we're using the one-to-one -one property also. All right, that's all for that.